So I want to talk about the best way to support somebody with CF because the number one thing you can do to help us, number one, don't go out when you're sick because when we get sick, it's a lot worse than it is for somebody else. And a lot of the times it ends us in the hospital and sometimes in the ICU. And that's not any fun. So, <laughs> although there's a ton of things that you can do to help, and I really appreciate people uh, who take the time to ask what they can do, the number one thing you can do is don't get us sick. So, that being said, obviously, I can't just avoid anyone ever who's sick, right? I still go to the grocery store every week <laughs> and there's sick people there all the time because not everybody just avoids being out in public when they're sick, nor can they. I understand that. Um, but if you're close to me or someone with CF and they were planning on coming over to your house or you're planning on going to theirs or whatever, you're planning on getting together and you're sick, cancel it. That's just all there is to it. And along with that, understand when we have to cancel. Because there's just times when your body acts up. And you definitely wanted to go do this fun thing, but you can't. Um, and just being a friend that is flexible with stuff like that, goes a long way um, towards supporting. There's a lot of emotional stuff that comes along with dealing with CF. If you're willing to listen, we will probably use you um, as a sounding board because it's nice to be able to talk to people. I have two Facebook groups full of just friends with CF that I vent about stuff that they will understand um, because I need a sounding board and so do they. But it's also nice to have someone that's removed from the problem as well, um, that we can just talk to about stuff. Um, it's, it's hard to, to balance having friends with CF and not getting discouraged, frankly, because although the life expectancy is increasing, um, when, I was, when I was born, I was not supposed to live as long as I currently have. So it's more than doubled, but there's still a lot of people that I have met, that I've talked with in the hospital, or reached out to online and have known that have passed away from CF. And so it's just kind of one of those things that it's like it should be regular, but yet it shouldn't because it's death. Like nothing should ever be regular about that. But you see another friend with CF pass away and you're like, this is really hard, right? Um, and so that's really hard to cope with, having friends that understand what you're going through and at the same time saying goodbye to a lot of them. Um, and that's something that I've definitely talked with other people about. Um, is just, I'm, I'm feeling really depressed. Um, this one passed away and it's also, uh, not only have I lost a friend, but it's also a reminder that I'm living this with this disease that kills me, right? Um, which is kind of depressing. <laughs> so um, I feel like every time one of my friends passed away, I'm just like, well, I'm not that bad yet. It's okay. Um, but at the same time, there's definitely a lot of emotional support that just goes with the fact that you are facing death and everyone faces death um, and we don't exactly know when it will be um, and obviously it's been longer than doctors originally predicted it would be right um, 
And the more medical advancements and scientific discoveries that we make, the longer I live and other people with CF live. Um, so you never really know if you're going to pass away at 20 or 40 or 60. But there's still that idea that you are dealing with something that will kill you no matter what. Um, and everyone gets in their car in the morning and could die in a car crash. You know, there's that whole anyone can die anytime. But I think there's a heightened awareness that comes with knowing that although you don't have an exact expiration date, um, you do have the knowledge that things are progressively getting worse. Um, and sure, you have times that are better, but my lung functions now compared to when I was eight are way worse, right? Um, and so that's just something to cope with, but it's also something that gives you an added sense of purpose because you have to do something worth living in the time that you have because you know that it's going to be shorter than it will be for other people. Um, and that's part of what has spurred me into doing what I have for like the CF Foundation, for example. I do great strides with them every year, um, trying to help raise money for scientific research, um, trying to support other people that are in the same boat as I am. Um, also just volunteering in the community however I can. Um, I think a lot of us are very involved in as much as we feel like we can be for our health. Um, I feel like even just in the things we do, there's an added sense of determination, I guess, that um, we are going to do this, even if people tell us we can't. Um, <laughs> there's the whole, well, it's okay if you don't finish college. A lot of people, you know, don't finish college anyway, and we understand that with CF it's a lot harder. and. I, in fact, I talked with the social worker about this last time I was in the hospital um, because my sister is currently trying to truck through college and having a job, and they think that's nuts, frankly. But those of us that actually have the disease are like, yeah, but this is my life, and I want to live my life. Um, and I had to take a semester off of college so I say I finished in three and a half years because I still finished in my four. And um, yes, it was difficult. Yes, I Skyped into a whole bunch of college classes from the hospital and did all sorts of stuff that most people think is crazy. Um, but that was something that I knew that I wanted to accomplish with my life and I wanted to do. And there's... A lot of my friends with CF have felt like college wasn't something that they were quite up to, and that's fine. But it's just an example of how, like, once we set our minds to something, we're like, I don't care, CF is not going to stop me. <laughs> like, sure, I'll have to go through all these things. And, yeah, it was, it was really difficult. I had one teacher that tried very hard to convince my other teachers that I had missed way too much school, and even though I was making everything up, um, that the school didn't have to keep me there because I'd missed way too many classes. Um, and I am there anytime I can be there. <laughs> um, but I had missed a lot of school that semester, and I was super lucky to have another teacher that stood up for me and said, you know what? Meg has the highest grades in my class right now. And she hasn't been there. And she is doing all of the readings. She is doing all the assignments. 
and she actually cares about school. So I'd rather her be here than somebody that's just la di dying through this whole thing. <laughs> um, so you you find champions for you that have been have been awesome. Um, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's difficult <laughs> to to try to do a lot of the things that everybody else does. But we have a lot of drive and determination to do those things anyway, which I think is a good thing.